For our centering moment, we're going to be doing something adventurous today. <laughs> um, the hymn number was listed incorrectly somewhere. It's 2118 in the faith we sing, and you will be singing the ostinato, the repeating part. And so uh, I'll start that going for you, and Nancy will join me, and she'll help me keep it going, and then I will be singing uh, verse one on top of that a few times. And then after I finish, you'll uh, sing the ostinato about two more times, and we will finish. <laughs> so go ahead and give us our, our A major. Veni Sancte Spiritus, 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 Come, Holy Spirit, from heaven shine Welcome this morning on this Memorial Day weekend. Um, and this is uh, Renton United Methodist Church. And so we welcome all of you who are here in the sanctuary with us and all of those of you who are worshiping at home with us this morning. Um, since this is Pentecost Sunday, um, it is the day that we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. So it is a, a wonderful celebration in the congregation. You'll see that all of the colors are red, the color of fire. Um, and so we will be serving communion later in the, in the service. And so if you are celebrating at home, if you're watching with us, I invite you to go get some bread or crackers and some water or juice so that you can receive communion along with us. Our opening hymn this morning is Spirit of God, and you'll find that on page 2117 of the Faith We Sing hymnal. Please stand, if you are able. i 
Waters will find release held in your hands, born on your wings. Alleluia, come Spirit, come. Alleluia, come Spirit, come. Spirit of God, bright hands, even in far off lands, you hold the human race in one arm embrace. No matter where we go, you hold us together so held in your hands. to churchers way to go. I'm Nancy Cook. I'm your liturgist this morning, and I would like for you to join me in the opening prayer. Breath of God, wind that blew over the sea at creation, breath that brought to life the human form, made of the dust of the earth, breathe life into us now. Oh, wait. Spirit that led Jesus through his days. Sorry. <clears throat> Breathe life into us now. <laughs> Recreate us and fill our bodies and souls with your word of life, your song of blessing. We breathe deeply of your presence in the secret language of the heart. Speak to us. Amen. Thank you. I'm... <clears throat> not the professional prayer like some people up here. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is from Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, here there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled them and the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages 
as the Spirit gave the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the na native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, all, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, Pal Pam Ugh. lots of people from the Bible, <coughs> Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Syria, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. We are all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. would like to come up for a children's time?
really good for you. Come on up. Let me have your name. Jax. Jax. You grew a lot. I didn't recognize you at all. Thank you for coming up. Um, I, this, is, this is real short, because I know you're just delighted to be up here, right? Um, so, but today, is the, today we're celebrating Pentecost, which is uh, a day where we just heard about fire blowing and, and wind blowing and that kind of thing. And so um, I have, uh, what are these, pinwheel? It's a thrilling gift, right? Yes, thank you for saying yes. Jack, that was so kind of you. So here is your pinwheel. And, um, and then we don't have Sunday school this morning because our Sunday school teacher has COVID. Um, and so pray for uh, Bernadette, teacher Bernadette. But if you want to color or something, there are some coloring pages and some, um, some crayons back there, which I think are probably too young for you. So, but thank you for coming up. I really appreciate it. Shall we have a prayer? Let's pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for this day of Pentecost, for your wind and for the breath of your wind, that breath that, that uh, blows our pinwheels and that fills our bodies and that blows the trees. We give you thanks for all of these. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Jax. I appreciate it. Do you want another one to take home? How about two? Have two of, that yes, be. that's very thoughtful of you. All of the brothers and sisters, thank you. Here we go, one more try. Would you stand for the reading of the gospel? It is uh, John 7, 37 through 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink, as the scripture has said. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I forgot to introduce myself today. Um, I am Reverend Kathy Morse, and I am the outreach minister here. It's uh, my turn to serve while our pastor, Michelle Kempton Stair, is on vacation. So we wish her a very wonderful and relaxing vacation this, this week. Easter and Pentecost were Jewish agricultural holy days long before they gained significance in the Christian, as Christian holy days. I was reminded of that this week when I heard Nancy Gillespie say that she and Dave had their first salad from their garden. The resurrection occurred on the Feast of First Fruits, the day in which Israel celebrated the miracle of new growth springing from the earth that promised a harvest. The festival of Pentecost came 50 days later as Israel rejoiced in the fullness of that harvest. The symbolic significance of the resurrection and the gift of the Holy Spirit on these two harvest holy days was not lost on the early church. The resurrection was only the beginning and promise of the fullness of God's power breathed into the disciples, ordinary people like you and me. And what a spectacle that first Pentecost was. The disciples were gathered for the harvest feast when they became the harvest. The power to preach fell on Peter, a hot-headed, leap-before-you-look fisherman. People either spoke or listened in other tongues, words that went straight to the heart. Fear disappeared, replaced by holy boldness. 
the power of God burst out of the temple, the locus of worship, and into the people. What I love about our reading today are the many and varied images of the Holy Spirit. In Acts on that first Pentecost, the Spirit was manifested in tongues of flame and a mighty rushing wind. Last week, images of flame burned out of control in Canada, and they were a terrifying warning about the power of fire to destroy. The two images are not that far apart. Let me read you the quote from Annie Dillard in her book, Teaching Stones to Talk. On the whole, I do not find Christians, outside the catacombs, sufficiently sensible to conditions. Does anyone have the foggiest idea what sort of power we so blithely invoke? Or, as I suspect, does no one believe a word of it? The churches are children playing on the floor with their chemistry sets, mixing up a batch of TNT to kill a Sunday morning. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. They should lash us to our pews, for the sleeping God may wake someday and take offense, or the waking God may draw us out to where we can never return. The Holy Spirit unleashed at Pentecost is powerful and sometimes frightening. Do we dare engage such a power? Are we willing to give up our sense of control? Preacher John Vandelaar asks, are we willing to allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by a vision of God's radically inclusive kingdom and to begin to live it out through spirit-empowered acts of welcome, compassion, grace, and service? Are we ready to have Christ's law of love written on our hearts, to have our way illumined by the Spirit's fire, and to be blown into unexpected relationship by the wind of the Spirit? If we can answer yes even a little, the Pentecost experience will come to us, and we will never be the same. Some of us may indeed live our faith with a fiery intensity, but others might find a more comforting image of the Spirit in Jesus' description from John's Gospel that we heard this morning. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Life-giving, healing, cleansing water. Water that refreshes the desert places in our lives. Water that fills us to overflowing with peace and joy, which then flows out into the world. Or the Spirit might be manifested in a shower of gifts for ministry, preaching, teaching, helping, encouraging, leading, and the list goes on. The point is that the Holy Spirit makes us, you and me, into something new. Gordon Lathrop writes that the most important symbol of Christ in the sanctuary is not the minister, not the altar, not even the bread and wine and water in the font. It is the assembly, the body of Christ, as the New Testament says. The assembly, the congregation, that's you. There's an old adage that says, when the building burns down and the preacher leaves town, what's left is the church. You are breathed into life and sustained by the Holy Spirit. You are the full harvest, the full promise of God. You have been given the manifested gifts of the Spirit to do more than you can imagine. Jesus said that we will do greater works than he did. Or when your pain is so deep that words elude you, the Apostle Paul tells us the Spirit prays for us in groans too deep for words. The Spirit breathes for us 
until we can breathe again. You are like fireworks that light up the night sky. And like fireworks, we come in a variety of shells, Roman candles, fountains, wagon wheels, crozettes, chrysanthemums, waterfalls. On the last 4th of July, as our youngest grandson twirled his sparkler in the night, he told his parents, you know, we're literally playing with fire. Fireworks aren't spectacular until they're lit and burst from their shells. May we have the courage to awaken to the power that has already been poured into us and light up the night sky. Amen. Come and lead us in our hymn of dedication. It's number 333 in the, the seminal. And feel free to move a little <laughs> as you feel led by the Spirit. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy One, light of love, sun of life, blaze of heaven, we turn to you like flowers to the sun to receive your light. Draw near to us and set us afire with your love. We are the lamp and you are the flame. We are the lighthouse and you are the light. Shine in us until we are pure light, pure love, pure life. You are the river and we are your riverbank. Flow in us so that we may bear your grace to all the world. In the name of the Spirit of Christ. This morning we pray for Bernadette for healing and for Pastor Michelle for rest and refreshment. And as we celebrate Memorial Day this weekend, we give thanks for those who served our country in its hour of need, and especially for those who gave even their lives in that service, as this day brings memory, uh, memories of those who have been lost for a while, may it also bring your consolation and the assurance that our loved ones are alive now and forever in your living presence. Help us, God of peace and God of justice, to honor them by working to recapture the kingdom dream of one nation under your providence, seeking to tear down the walls that divide us and the barriers that keep some from living in the freedom won by their sacrifice. Help us at the same time to study war no more and to learn to live in peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, we pray who taught us 
to pray as his disciple or taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Nancy Gillespie has our offering moment this morning. I'm sure many of us noticed this person sleeping outside on the next to the driveway on our way into church this morning. Mickey brought him some food and some cash. Let us take a moment to offer a silent prayer for Mickey's kind heart and also for the well-being of the person who found a resting place near our church. Amen. My real job today was to talk about the Neighbor to Neighbor program. So we're finishing up month five. We're giving items essential to daily living to our neighbors in need. It has been amazing to see the generous donations from everyone here. This month, we have collected hundreds of personal care items. Thank you. In June, our theme will be back to basics and we are going to collect peanut butter and jelly. So if you'd like to help us collect that and we will distribute it to various food banks in the area. But we had another goal with Neighbor to Neighbor and that was to encourage our community to join us in this effort. We've had some limited success with this. One or two individuals dropping off items to uh, help us fill this need. But I think I think our perseverance is paying off. Last Tuesday, a resident of one of our neighboring condos stopped by to drop off a donation. For unfortunately, those of us that were collecting food that day had already left, but Michelle was here, Pastor Michelle. She had, the neighbor had seen our signs and wanted to help out. Success, very small. Someone from the community is joining our effort. Remember, it only takes a spark to get that fire going. This neighbor expressed her appreciation for the beautiful, peaceful grounds that we have around our building. During COVID, she often walked her dog around the neighborhood and around the church grounds. She was so appreciative of the safe, uncrowded place to experience nature. So hope is here. We will persevere. We will continue to offer a way for our neighboring community to join us to help those in need. Our job is to continue to share and also to continue to spread the word to others to come join our efforts. Thank you. As we prepare to celebrate communion this morning, I'll invite those who are helping with communion to come and, um, and those of you who are at home to get your uh, bread or crackers or your water or juice. And you will see as we, um, as we receive communion, you will see the words to one bread, one body on the screens. And you are welcome to sing as you are coming up. Um, you won't need your hymnal. Most of us know that song. And so um, just sing along as you come forward. And um, if you don't know it, you can just be free to listen. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. It is good to be to give God our praise. 
We thank you, God, for in the beginning, you gathered up dust from the earth and breathed your breath into it, and it became a living being, us, your people. When we were lost and enslaved, your pillar of fire led us to freedom through the wilderness. When we were defeated and lifeless, your wind brought life to our dry bones. In our need, you sent Jesus, conceived by the Holy Spirit. So we sing praise and thanks to you with all creation breathing together. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are all who come in your name, and blessed is Jesus your Christ, who taught and healed, who fed the hungry and included the outcast. He breathed upon us his spirit, renewing your covenant to be with us always in love and empowering us to love as he loved. On the night that Jesus ate with his friends, he took bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Let the breaking of bread be a remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, my life poured out for you. Remember me. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember his death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restores our life. Christ will come again in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the living presence of Christ. Pour out your Spirit on us, that we may become what we have eaten, the living body of Christ, take us, bless us, break us, and give us to the world as a sign of your covenant of love, one in your grace and aflame with your love, for the sake of the world, in the name of Christ. Amen. This is the bread of heaven. It is the body of Christ. Together, we are the body of Christ. This is the cup of the new covenant, a blessing for us. I'll invite those who are helping to serve um, now to, um, why don't one of you come over here? Here you are. This is Christ's table, and it is Christ's invitation. Oh, all, all are welcomed, all are loved, all are accepted. The table is set. Come and dine.
I invite you to stand as able for number 2238 in the midst of new dimensions. seated, I want to remind you of Fran Underwood's memorial service this Saturday at 1 p.m. And if you can make three dozen cookies for that, uh, that celebration of her life, would you see Carol Abrahamson or Donnell um, Brotherton after the worship service? They would really appreciate it. And before the benediction, um, I want to say thank you to Isaiah. Isaiah's been with us for four weeks um, while Sabrina's been out of the country, and we are so grateful. So grateful. <laughs> and we hope you'll come back. <laughs> now, receive the benediction. People of God, you have been ignited by the Holy Spirit. Go, light up the sky. Amen. <laughs>